My name is Chris Rees and I work at Royal Holloway University of London and today we presented uh, myself and my two colleagues Lutz Preuss and Michael Gold. We presented the findings from our book um, on corporate social responsibility and trade unions in a European context and what the book um, tried to do was to study trade union attitudes towards CSR and also trade union engagement with CSR in a range of different European countries and we studied 11 different countries and in each of those we conducted or a team of researchers in those countries conducted interviews with several national level uh, trade unions in different sectors. The key uh, approach of the book was informed by a theoretical position usually referred to as varieties of capitalism so what we wanted to try to do in the book was to explore the extent to which we can understand trade union positions on CSR and trade union engagement with CSR in terms of different institutional settings and different national varieties of capitalism. And what we found was that we need perhaps to take a more nuanced position um, in terms of interpreting CSR in those theoretical terms. My name is Michael Gold. I'm Professor of Comparative Employment Relations at Royal Holloway University of London. Part of the purpose of this book was to try to explain the origins of trade union responses to corporate social responsibility, or CSR. However, much literature on CSR is not entirely satisfactory from our point of view, because it, it as Chris mentioned just now, uh, reflects part of the varieties of capitalism literature, which we find very often rather crude as a way of explaining the origins of CSR. So, for example, in the case of the UK, a liberal market economy, uh, we find shareholder interest is the main dynamo behind business practice, whereas in Germany, which is characterised as a coordinated market economy, we find that longer stake or broader stakeholder interests are behind uh, a lot of business strategy. Now, in terms of CSR, some have argued that it is a substitute in countries like Britain for the more institutionalised legal frameworks of corporate social responsibility that you find in countries like Germany, uh, or else other people have argued that it reflects the need for companies to show that they are behaving in a responsible manner in order to maximise shareholder value. So, for example, a company trading on its reputation doesn't want to be found engaged in child labour in an emerging economy or in environmental despoliation somewhere else in the world. Therefore, CSR becomes a means by which companies can try to show themselves being responsible actors. However, uh, the rather crude distinction between coordinated market economies on the one hand and liberal market economies on the other doesn't do justice to the full range of countries that we find in the European Union. It's all very well for Germany and the UK, for example, but what about southern European countries? And indeed, what about the emerging or the transition economies of uh, Eastern and Central Europe, such as Poland, Lithuania, Hungary, Slovenia. In the case of Poland, for example, we find that it shares both elements of liberal market economy and also of coordinated market economy. So, for example, we find labour markets are rather deregulated, trade unions are rather weak, and uh, the welfare state is under, uh, under pressure from market values which are characteristics of a liberal market economy. Yet on the other hand, we find the government still is quite a major actor in employment relations and in, in, in the economy, and uh, foreign direct investment is also an important element. So the question then is that Poland, for, just to take that one example, it can be seen as neither one nor the other. Therefore, we tend to transcend this notion of varieties of capitalism by looking at more specific factors that uh, create the responses for trade unions. For example, government intervention, government uh, regulation of CSR is one important factor in countries like France and Spain. The structure of trade unions themselves, the ideological splits amongst the French unions may also be an important factor. Economic sectors, for example, the weight bet between multinational companies, domestic companies, small and medium-sized uh, companies, these are also factors that tend to create the context within which unions uh, begin to develop their policies and engagement with CSR. And it's for that reason we tend to look more at other areas of engagement, such as with non-government organisations, NGOs, and that tended to inform a lot of our work.
Hello, my name is Lutz Breuss. I'm also from Royal Holloway University of London. One of the themes that I would like to highlight is the question whether trade unions see CSR as threat or as opportunity. Now, why should CSR be a threat? Uh, fairly simply, because it could be seen as a window dressing exercise that might hide uh, corporate wrongdoings, corporate neglect of labor standards. On the other hand, a CSR could also be seen as an opportunity uh, because the concept uh, docks with some aspects of uh, trade union interest with interests in uh, safeguarding um, employment conditions, etc. So there is a possibility of trade unions actually using this concept to put additional pressure on employers. What we found is that indeed uh, unions express both uh, views that CSR is both an opportunity and a, a threat and the degree of opportunity or threat depends on a range of factors, for example on how safely they are embedded in their national business systems, where Finnish unions, for example, who enjoy um, a high degree of legal protection, were among the most positive with regard to CSR. On the other hand, uh, some of the UK unions uh, were more skeptical and one of the drivers here was the, uh, the fact that unions enjoy uh, uh, rather less uh, protection in legal terms. Now you can see this uh, quite clearly in the field of union collaboration with non-governmental organizations. Uh, NGOs, of course, have been among the key drivers uh, for CSR. If you think of NGOs like Amnesty International pushing for consideration of human rights, and because of that, we do see quite a degree of collaboration uh, between trade unions and NGOs. As an example, the Ethical Trading Initiative, uh, ETI in the UK, uh, has been set up by uh, the British government, uh, by trade unions, and also by key NGOs. However, again, uh, one of the stumbling blocks here, again, is that trade unions see themselves as a particular stakeholder, as the only stakeholder who operates within the company, whereas from a CSR point of view, uh, CSR, um, there is a risk that trade unions are seen as just one stakeholder among many. So this then boils down to the risk that CSR might actually be a substitute for social dialogue.